Hey y'all, this is Sarah. I have a New Year's project for you guys. Um, New Year's party celebration kind of project. And it is nothing new and innovative. You've already seen me do some of my Christmas ones. This is very similar to my Merry Christmas sign. Uh, I'm, I'm following with the same idea. Just switching what it says. And you'll probably see me do that quite a few times throughout the next few seasons. Because I did love the simplicity of that sign. Um... It was really a struggle for me to want to take it down with my Christmas decor because I did like that sign. I'm sure I will be replacing that same one throughout the holiday seasons in the year just to have that same design but different wording. Um, so I'm more giving the idea of doing this and how nice it looks no matter what the wording is. So really quick, I want to jump into what I'm going to be using. Um, and... Let me start with, I am using just some Dollar Tree Ready Board brand foam core. This in uh, this particular one is in the color black. I like the black background. Um, if you saw my last one, I did it with just Dollar Tree contact paper, but this one I'm going to actually be using vinyl. Uh, if you're not familiar with this stuff, this is like poster board, but it's a little thicker. It's got a foam center there, and this is going to be used as my backer piece. Uh, this one comes at 20 inches by 30 inches. You can find this Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Walmart, any of those places. It's usually a dollar or less a sheet. Walmart is the cheapest at 88 cents, but my Walmart never has them. So I pretty much buy mine by the entire box at Dollar Tree. You can buy them from Dollar Tree online for 25 bucks for a case. Um, if you're getting hardcore into this like I do. The other thing I'm going to be using is I've got two strips already painted. Um, they don't have to be this size. I'm probably going to make my frame about an inch wide um, for this particular project. The painting for these, that is its own tutorial. There are several to pick your colors and kind of customize what your faux wood look is going to be. Um, I'm just using kind of a couple pieces from a couple different batches. Uh, once I cut them down... It really doesn't matter if they're all that similar. I'm going to cut these down to make my frame. So at this stage, they are three inches wide by 30 inches. I'm going to be trimming them down to fit this. One of the things I want to mention really quick, and I mentioned this in various videos. When you are cutting your foam core, for those of you that are still struggling to get really good cuts and things like that, um, and getting your paint laid down really nicely for the faux wood look, Try to always cut at the full length of this thing, which is the 30 inch span. And here's why. These things are manufactured in that direction. And some pieces, when you get them, you can almost see the ripple underneath the paper surface. You can see kind of that ripple mark where these things are manufactured. When you cut against that ripple, you get those rougher, more jagged edges. And those ripples will also kind of show up in your paint job. So if you cut along the length of those ripples, you end up kind of lining up. And you can almost see maybe where the light is hitting, where those ripples occur on here. So when you're cutting this lengthwise, you hit along those and you're not getting as much of the jagged edges. Nor are you getting those ripples showing up in your uh, faux paint finish. All right. So the other thing I'm going to be using is I'm actually using real vinyl for a change. Surprise. Um, this one is a muted gold color by American Crafts. I don't think it has. Uh, it just says gold matte foil. So it took me about nine inches of this to get my lettering. Um, and here you can see I've already got mine cut out. This is the Elizabeth font on my Cricut Design Studio Design Space. I don't remember what it's called now. Um, this is Elizabeth is the font that I'm using. Um, I've cut it somewhere between seven and eight inches. Uh, it was at a decimal point. I didn't look. I just kind of eyeballed it. I knew I could get away with pretty big because of the size of this whole thing. Uh, so that's kind of a personal choice. But I did like it in this, this muted gold. And I think that's going to pop really nicely on this black background. As far as transfer tape goes. I am just going to be using the clear Dollar Tree contact paper as my transfer tape. Now, this is where things get tricky. Um, and I want to caution you to always, always, especially if you're doing it like on your black or even when you're trying to get it on this wood, take some extra 
steps and it does make it a little more difficult than if you were actually working with wood but take a few extra steps of care and caution because for this one in particular i'm using this black background the problem with that is is that this is not solid black all the way through just like when you rip a sticker off of something and sometimes especially a piece of paper and it can pull up like that top layer of paper if your transfer paper does that and pulls up off this black you end up with like um, white tear marks underneath it so we have to be really careful when we're doing this it's not impossible it just takes a little um a little more gentleness so when you're getting ready to use your transfer paper i'm going to fit mine too here but before i actually do i am going to stick this contact paper because mine will be a brand new piece i am going to stick it to my shirt stick it to something i want it to be barely sticky just barely barely sticky just enough to get my vinyl letters to stick to it but not enough where it's going to pull up my paper surface so i'm going to go ahead and cut this down and i'm going to show you why my letters look crazy because we have to trim this down really really close uh just to get started you want to trim your contact paper really close using vinyl at this stage with this product you almost want to treat it like stickers um, so you don't want to use your transfer paper as kind of your guide to get this stuck down. You're going to have to do that yourself. So let me kind of trim this down and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okie dokie, guys. You can kind of see what I did here. And I don't know if you can see all those little fibers. I used my fuzzy, fluffy bathrobe to stick my transfer paper to so that it would pick up all the little fuzzies and stuff from my bathrobe and kind of really, really lessen the stickiness to this thing. Um, and that is really important to this, especially if you're going to do this on these these black background ones. Um, now, the more practice you get in this, you won't have to go this far. You'll be able to kind of get a hang for it. But um, until you kind of get practice working with this foam core and know how it responds and what it is capable of and, and where the breakdown in this kind of material is, always error to the side of caution just to save yourself some headache okay so you can see my letters all on here crazy because i'm going to try to cut down as close to these things as i can anyway um and you're gonna see i'm just literally going to try to trim right up to the edge of these i'm gonna hand lay mine so i don't get a whole lot of help on this which is not too bad. This is only, um, it's only one word. If I was doing a bunch of words, I, I would likely struggle to. Um, but with it just being one simple word, I can usually manage to be able to hand lay these. So I'm going to go around. And if you notice, I welded some of my letters together that looked um, like they should be connected. The letter S didn't work out being connected. It didn't line up right. Um, how I wanted it to so I left it individual so that I could get my swoop on my R and obviously my letter C was Independent from these anyway because of its little fancy loop-de-loops on here uh, You're not necessarily Gonna have that that much separation on yours if you don't want to and if you're using um, If you're using letters that connect a little better You might get it all in one word and it'll make it really easy for you to line up it really kind of boils down to whatever font you pick. If I didn't mention, and I can't remember if I did, this is Elizabeth, the font. Um, and I'm going to continue to cut each one of these as close as I possibly can get to the edge of those letters without losing the ability. And then I'm going to do like I typically would and go in and try to make sure that the vinyl is sticking to this contact paper. So here you can see I've got everything all weirdly cut down. I'm going to come in now, go ahead and, and burnish this down, push this down. It's going to take a little extra effort to do that since I really kind of corroded my transfer paper with all the little fuzzy stuff on it um, to weaken that sticky. So now I've got to work extra hard to get my vinyl to be sticky. Uh, this is going to, I'm going to tell you now, just give you forewarning. To get this lot, um, lay down and applied, it's going to be a little awkward. I probably need um, six or seven hands 
to do it since we've cut it out and now I've got this long thin piece um, so it will look a little awkward for me to do this and you don't have to do this every time I'm only showing you doing it this way right now to show you to take this caution when doing it to the surface um, when when you've had a little practice and you really get a feel for it you don't have you still want to be extra careful and cut things down and trim things down but once you learn your your material you can get a little less um, paranoid with it i tend to show you guys that direction especially for beginners who are just now learning to play with this material um, that it can be a little it can be a little fickle to work with sometimes and I know I sound like, I probably sound like I'm pretty hyper today. And I'll tell you why. I quit coffee two years ago. And um, I, something out of a spur recently made me get some coffee again. Um, we had, we've had cold weather and rain come in. So I'm all hopped up on coffee for someone that has not had coffee in two years. I feel like a toddler that ate all of their Christmas candy at once. So I'm going to come in and like I said, I'm going to have to eyeball this and hope for the best. So when you're putting your pressure down, one of the things is... Um, Try not to get your transfer tape to really be where you're rubbing your sticky part down. Just kind of rub it along your vinyl lettering part, if that makes sense. And I just crinkled that, you guys. And it may be a good thing that I did, so I can show you that you really do have to be super cautious when moving this stuff around on this black surface. And I may can repair that once it's all down. So... I'm going to be okay with that. This little edge I can fix. Like I said, vinyl in this material, not impossible. Just a little, it can be a little cranky with you. This right here is the hardest part for me is getting that separation done. So try not to judge me on that. Here we go. So I've got this little section out from under there. And because this thing is going to string out long, since it's long skinny letters, I'm going to, oh, 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 there we go. I'm going to cut that first section away so that everything's not sticking all at once. I told you this was going to be um, uncomfortable and awkward to watch me do this, freehanding it. But I really don't want anybody to get like all the way into a project, get all their components put together, and then go to lay their vinyl and mess up their whole project. So now I've got it to that point, I can make this so much easier. And I'm going to do this kind of the same way I just did that. I'm going to cut a little bit away from my little... Um, wax backer white portion here until I get each one kind of applied and it's a little different when you're doing it on like the um, your painted wood surface and I've got videos up for that guys because they're uh, this painted wood surface we're using white paint wax paints to do that almost makes it become just like this wax papery material that these things um, that we're pulling these things off of so it almost doesn't want to stick and you've got to um, really convince it that it wants to stick it's a lot easier on getting it to stick to this uh black surface this black foam core surface definitely wants to stick to it but you want it to be able to come back the rest of it to come back off too so I'm hoping for the best here. I'm going to go ahead and finish laying this part down. And then I will show you some little, little tricks here to get this back off. To get your um, transfer paper back off.
Okay, so I've got everything stuck down and now it's a little less awkward. And I'm going to go ahead and start getting some of this off. And what I want you to see is that these edges are all still lifted on my transfer paper. And really the main part that's touching is the vinyl um, section that I've got touching the black. So I did not go in like you usually would and kind of press all that down. I only did it right along my little vinyl areas. And I'm just using a popsicle stick because this popsicle stick is kind of flexible and flimsy. So I'm less likely to leave any gouge marks, one, in this foil lettering, and two, in this foam core, because we know this foam core is soft enough for us to put marks and indentions in it. Um, I don't want to do that while I'm trying to get my letters to stick down. So I've got that lifted. And I'm flipping back. And this is kind of my favorite tip, especially working with this. I'm flipping back, and I've got this flipped all the way back over where it's touching that foam core. And I'm almost using resistance here to pull this off against that popsicle stick. And this seems to help quite a bit when you're doing it on the foam core. You're less likely to gouge your surface. You're less likely to um, leave any accidental indentions and things like that. And you can see that transfer tape is coming off really, really easy. But like I said, I did it on my robe that is super, super fuzzy. It left little pieces of fur and whatever behind on that transfer tape. So it almost had no stick left to it. Just enough to help me hold my letters shapes. So this one was much easier. I think next time, instead of just doing it to whatever t-shirt I'm wearing, I'm going to consider always doing it with my fuzzy house robe because it definitely took a lot of the stick off and you can see just how easy this is peeling off in comparison to what it normally takes for me so here we go super pretty i know there's kind of a glare super pretty against that black um your next step just come in with your wooden popsicle stick because we don't want to dent we don't want to um especially on working with foil you don't want to leave any marks in that foil because it'll take those indentions also and there we go. I have that on there. Next thing is, I'm just going to come in and decide what size frame I want for this. Um, this is, I'm just going to show you a couple. This is one of my strips that I've cut down at about an inch and a quarter. Um, this is what it looks like at, um, straight at an inch. I'm thinking, I don't know, inch and a quarter maybe? What do you guys think? I like the thinner frames. I don't know why. Um, for stuff like this, especially when I'm going really basic with just a lettering sign, I do like the narrower uh, frame. And you end up getting a whole lot more. So if I go three inches out of one of my three inch strips, I'll be able to cut three pieces of that. So I think that's what I'm going to do um, really quick. I'm using this opportunity, one, just to mainly share the idea that you can do fun things for New Year's. Um, I thought the cheers was a really generic way of doing a new year sign i want to show you guys I, I keep having questions christmas time has come some people have been able to get their hands on one of these style cutters for christmas mine is an older one mine is the 301m model these are um these are slightly older i think the newest line is in the 700 range on the model number there's a couple things when you're looking for one so some of them look just like this Except for right here, where mine has hinges, right? They're not hinged. It's one solid piece, and this does not lift up. On those, because these things were originally made to cut photo matting um, and picture matting material, that chipboard-like material, which is a lot thinner than foam core, on those ones that do not have that hinging, liftable arm, your foam core won't fit under there. Now, I have not gotten my hands on one of those close enough to see if maybe you could um, unscrew it a little bit and make it a little thicker where you could, you know, maybe alter it a little, unscrew it, slide some washers in there, and then screw it back down and give a little more lift on that. That part, I don't know. Those of you that have gotten your hands on one of those that don't have the hinged version, 
look at that. See if maybe that's a possibility because I know that some of those non-hinged ver versions will not let you slide it under there. Mine has the arm. That makes it easy because not only can I cut this, but I actually um, use this for chipboard and things like that because I'm a scrapbooker. It was easier for me to get this for chipboard than it was to consistently use my paper trimmer and things like that and wear those down. So this cool little gadget, I'm going to bring my little slider to one inch because I think I'm just going to do a one inch frame just to kind of um, make that a simple measurement. I'm going to pop this in place. Uh, the other thing about getting these things used. So some of the used ones have the little handheld um, cutter part and I'm going to show you that. So this is the handheld part that I'm talking about, and not all of these come with this. I had to buy mine separately because I have an older version. Um, the model for this thing, this is their straight cutter model 701-1, um, and it uses blade number 270. Um, not all of these have this particular one. Mine came with a blade, but it was a beveled blade, which does not give you a flat end, and you have to make two cuts in order to get a cut in here. Um, for those of you that get your hands on one of these mat cutters that don't come with this, you can still absolutely just do it with your blade. Just come in, use that straight edge as your guide, and my finger's honestly resting right on that thing to help make that simpler. And there you go. You don't necessarily have to have this piece. I think it retails at Hobby Lobby for a around $30. Um, so either which way, it's more this part right here is the part that I find useful simply because I can use it either which way. But to show you how this guy works, um, it's on a rocker system so that the blade doesn't stab anybody. So you're going to align this little area right here, this little track system on the little track of this moving arm and slide it right across there and you see how simple that was either which way i kind of wanted to point that out there are still people asking questions about this um, particular cutter there's a whole video for that so i've got my one inch strips i've got one more sitting here to the side but the next step i'm going to do before i put any of these down and i noticed um that uh recently someone had posted a project and um, they didn't paint out their sides. So I always paint my sides once I do this part so that when it's, once it's laying down, you don't see any of that white. And when I'm doing it, especially on a piece like this, where my background is black, I definitely kind of want to get those insides painted. If you can see what it looks like, if you don't paint that edge versus, hmm, let me grab the edge that is painted. So then it actually looks like a full wood strip instead of, um, I guess it kind of, if you don't paint it, it's more like a veneer, um, if you will. So the next step on this is painting those down and then we're going to cut those down. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get all my edges painted just like this. And for me, in order to do that, and like I said, the painting tutorials are their own little, um, their own little video tutorial because they take a little longer what I do is I take a mixture of just my Waverly wax and antique a little bit of my Waverly ink color and usually just a tiny bit of the clear just to kind of offset um, the chalk consistency of my ink color and I mix it all together to get a slightly darker brown I do that because the antique itself, if you notice, it has some red undertones. Um, and when I'm working with these multi-tonal wood colors like this, um, I tend to like a little bit of a browner edge versus that red edge. But you could do that um, to kind of your personal taste there. So I'm just taking one of the Dollar Tree kitchen sponges and dipping down in there. I use the kitchen sponge because these edges are sharp uh, once we have them cut and they'll really tear up your other sponges, your nicer bath sponge that you use. 
to get this texture. Although I find myself more and more relying on these for a lot of things, um, paint wise, just because they make a really good, as a really good paint applicator, that density of that sponge really holds up to applying paint smoothly. And that's really all you have to do is just kind of go down. Um, I have some overage here on this wider side. I typically try to kind of smush it on there so that it gets a little bit on that wider side, just so that when I lay it down, you don't see any white. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these edges and give them a moment to draw. And I'll show you how I'm cutting this down to frame it out. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, why did I cut these down after painting them versus going ahead and getting all my cuts done and then painting them? I find it much easier to paint the the bigger three inch strip and hold on to it and get it painted down than I do trying to get my wood look on these little skinnier strips. So that's why I do it that way. You do you and whatever is comfortable to you. And looky there, I missed a whole section of that. I don't know how I managed to do that, um, but I can fix that in just a moment. Really quick. Um, framing. I'm going to go ahead and frame mine out with a mitered edge and to show you how to do that to get your lengths since I'm going to stick at this uh, 20 by 30 inch whole full piece here I'm going to leave two of these at the full um, 30 inch span that they're already in and two of these I'm going to cut down to the 20 inch length of the side. We're not gonna add anything to that. We're not anything else. In order to get your miter, you wanna go with exactly the length and width of your full entire finished project. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these two strips down to the 20 inch, leave these two at the 30 inch, and I'll show you how to get those miters. You can see now that I literally have cut it length to length, edge to edge, nothing extra, just the full length of this. In order to get these mitered cuts, I want to show you right quick. There is a video specifically to doing edges and miters and getting kind of finishing off a piece and that kind of thing. So you can check that out. Um, in order to do your miter cuts, my strip is an inch wide. So I'm going to flip over where you guys can kind of see. It's an inch wide this way. So I want to come over an inch and mark it and I will have a perfect square marked out right there. I've come over an inch, I've marked that out. Now, once you have that perfect square, you're gonna come in and you wanna cut it diagonal across that. And when you cut diagonal across a perfect square, you get a 45 degree angle. Once we put all of those angles together, um, we'll have a nice mitered edge frame. So I'm gonna do that again really quick because I want to show you that you want to keep this longest point along the same edge. So I want to make sure that my longest point is going to line up right along the same edge. So I'm going to come to this one, do the very same thing. I want to mark out my square. I'm going to look, my longest point is here. So my longest point needs to be down to this corner. Just going to mark that really quick so you guys can kind of see and when I cut these and when I pretty much cut anything I always try to start my blade a little higher so that I'm biting in really well um, with pressure before I hit the actual foam core otherwise you get like this crushing kind of start there at the beginning if you start out like that though it just slides right through that like butter and you get a real crisp clean cut and especially when you're trying to get these angles like this you want it to go uh, really clean like that so every one of your strips are going to have this longer point at one end and the shorter section at the other so i'm going to go ahead and finish out all four pieces the very same way all four of these pieces are cut down have my little angles and a quick tip um before you go to attach these, because you can sometimes see a little bit of white right here as this angle hits, and you'll notice a little more maybe on this one, um, rather than have any of that white show through, take your little sponge, your little saturated sponge, and hit 
those also you don't even have to full do the entire thing just that first little part of that uh that edge and you can kind of see the difference there that that makes when you're looking so it just it hides any of the white and you don't even have to do the whole thing just enough to keep that white from showing so i'm gonna go ahead and do that to uh every single one of these edges those are done i'm able to come in now and just start gluing so in order to glue, I'm just using Dollar Tree uh, hot glue sticks. I want to make sure that I'm going all the way along the edges of my pieces because when I get them to stick to these sides, I want to have a pretty tight adhesion of this frame piece to my edge right here. Um, because when I go in and hit that edge with a little more paint where those edges are white on my backer piece, like back here, um, I want a pretty tight connection right there so that there's no gaps and it almost looks like it's one solid edge along this side. Uh, so I typically go all the way around rather than doing opposition kind of pieces here. I want to go kind of all the way and get these stuck down and glued down so um that's pretty much the last step and then you'll go in and and hit these very edges with your paint so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i won't make you watch me glue each one of these down individually all my edges are glued down everything's all nice and secure i've got my nice miter frame here and the last step for me on a piece like this is now you can see where my backer has um this white edge showing I'm going to come in, same paints, and hit those edges so that piece starts to blend in as one uh, kind of thicker framing piece. Uh, this is the, the kind of the last quality control step, and uh, if it's not a big deal to you, don't worry about it. To me, I do like that no matter which angle I see this from, it looks like a good solid uh, kind of finished wood piece, so I would go in, finish those out. The last thing for me is um, questions on how you hang pieces like this. So this one, given that it is this lightweight, even though it's as large as it is, I personally will be able to hang this if I wanted to um, hang this particular piece. This can hang with poster putty, just the poster tack putty in a couple of strategic spots and you should be able to hang this on the wall. You'd be surprised at a 30 inch piece just how lightweight this is since we've only used one layer and then the four little strips. Um, there's lots of other options. Command strips are usually my go-to but on a piece this lightweight I'm not wasting my command strips on something like this. It's very simple to just prop this up if you're wanting to use it on a fireplace or some kind of setting like that. But there you go. I just wanted to throw you out an idea for New Year's. Um